Hello guys uh, and welcome to my fifth video in this Lagom tutorial series. I'm Alfred Samanga and today we're going to be talking about Lagom persistence, uh, event sourcing and command query responsibility segregation. That's ESCQRS. So just as a recap before we get into this, in the last video we spoke about inter-microservice communication communication between microservice A and microservice B. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can persist your data in each of these microservices. Uh, so this one is going to be a theory video. I think we'll do practice in the next video in the upcoming three videos. CQRS is a bit involving, so we might end up with like four or five videos, including this one. Okay, so let's get into it. What is ES and CQRS? So when you are designing microservices, each service should have its own data and have direct access to the database. Uh, there, there must be no sharing of data across uh, different services since it will lead to tight coupling. So a service should be the sole accessor of its uh, data in the database. If you can't separate the databases, at least to separate the tables within the same DBMS, database management system. To say if you have a product service and it is a product table and a user service with a user table, a product service should only ever access the product table and a user service should only ever access the user table. You can't have them uh, crossing into each other's data. Right. A microservice operates within a clear bound, uh, boundary similar to bounded context in triple D domain driven design. So yes, there the are boundaries of operations where we say a microservice should be uh, should do one thing and do it well, right? So you, you should have a clear boundary ar around what the microservice can do, what data it can access and all that. Right. To achieve a decoupled architecture, Lagom uses uh, pers uh, uh, Lagom persistence rather promotes the use of ES uh, CQRS event sourcing and command query responsibility segregation. Keyword there promotes. You are free to choose an implementation that you want. You can use the Cassandra session, which is an asynchronous API for storing data in Cassandra. You can use JPA, JDBC, and now these APIs are blocking. So if you do decide to use these ones, you are going to have to manage uh, multi-threading there. You are going to have to manage the blocking by introducing dedicated thread pools. Okay, so after we are done with CQRIS, I think I will take you guys through the other way of persisting data in Lagom without using ES and CQRS. And then you guys can weigh which approach you want. Yeah, so we'll start with uh, CQRS because it's more involving. Right, uh, we cannot write a query that spans multiple aggregates. Therefore, we, we need to create a view of the data tailored to the queries that the service provides. Okay, you will see what I mean by this in the upcoming uh, slides. So in, in what, what we just mean is, CQRS are separating reads from writes, right? So you have a write side that is optimized for writing and you have a read side that is optimized for reading, right? Uh, we will explain what an aggregate is and why you cannot query multiple aggregates. Okay, so event sourcing, what is ES? Event sourcing uh, pattern defines an approach to handling operations on data that is driven by a sequence of events each of which is recorded in an append-only store, right? So events are persisted when they arrive. A user action is represented by a command to the application. The command ultimately leads to events which are then persisted. Each event represents a set of changes to the data, right? So now if uh, something goes wrong, you can replay the events to determine the current state of an entity. Uh, it is the practice of capturing all changes as domain events, which are immutable facts of things that have happened. So these events are things that happened in the past. For example, an address was added to a customer. It's immutable. You cannot change something that happened in history. So, yeah, they, they, you can only ever append. If you say you have added an address to a customer, now you want to remove it, you have to send another command to say drop that address from this customer, right? Event sourcing is used for an aggregate route. Okay, let's just see what an aggregate route is. For example, a customer 
So we are going to uh, do event sourcing for customers such as address added, address updated, things like that. Okay, uh, aggregate route. But before we go to uh, aggregate route, what is an aggregate? Uh, it's a larger unit of encapsulation than just a class. Uh, I will give you references to this information at the end of the video. Right. Every transaction is scoped to a single aggregate. The lifetime of the components of an aggregate are bounded by the lifetime of the entire aggregate. So if we have a customer, right, uh, the aggregate uh, around the customer will involve things like the customer's address, the customer's uh, contacts, and things like that. That's an aggregate. So an aggregate aggregates draw a boundary around one or more entities. The entity in this case, customer address, uh, contact details. An aggregate enforces invariance for all its entities for an operation it supports. Invariance are just truth or uh, rules. Can I say that should be maintained? These are truths that should be maintained across the lifetime of the aggregate. Right. For example, an invariant if we are dealing with circles would be the radius cannot be negative. It has to be true for any valid circle. Okay, right. So now we have said an aggregate is a boundary around one or more entities. What is an aggregate root? Uh, so uh, each aggregate is a root entity, which is the only member of the aggregate that any object outside the aggregate is allowed to hold a reference to. So if you are going to communicate with the customer aggregate, the only way to do that is to go through the customer entity itself, which then knows how to deal with the other entities within the aggregate. So this 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 root entity, the main entity in the aggregate, this is what we call the aggregate root. An aggregate replies to specific queries for a specific identifier. So for an aggregate called customer, you're going to have customer A, customer B, customer C. If you send commands for customer A, uh, it's going to reply uh, to queries that are for customer A. You cannot have <coughs> a command for customer A being replied to by a, an aggregate routine for customer C. That doesn't happen. So aggregate replies to queries for a specific identifier. They only reply to what is intended for them. Okay, so if you think of an aggregate as a graph of object relations, the aggregate root is the one at the top, right? So we are going to have a customer here, address, uh, contact details and all that. The one at the top, that's the aggregate root, which speaks for the whole and may delegate uh, down to the rest. It is the one that the world communicates with. Okay, so that's it about an aggregate root. CQRIS, Command Query Responsibility seg Segregation. What is it about? CQRIS addresses, uh, separates the reads and writes into separate models using commands to update the data and queries to read the data. I will show you a graphic from, uh, from Microsoft uh, later on so that you can see this separation. Commands should be task-based rather than data-centric. For example, Add an address to a customer. It's something from the domain that when our customers come, we might need at some point to capture their addresses. So we are capturing domain events. Those become the commands. We should not be data centric. For example, you cannot say update customer status to active. That's not a good command. Okay. So queries never modify the database. They're saying we're separating writes, uh, writes from reads. The queries are going to be reading the data. A query will return a DTO, that's data transfer object, that does not encapsulate any domain knowledge. Right. So, in CQRS, what you're going to have is a user performs an action. The action in the system is the command, right? The command leads to an event, right? For example, uh, the command was add address to customer. Event is uh, address added to customer, right? When that event is received, there's going to be a state change on the customer aggregate, right? There's a new address in place here, and then the event is persisted in a, in in the storage somewhere. They are only ever appended. We say the events are immutable, so they are appended to storage. This actually increases transaction rates. It's more efficient because there are no updates, right? Yeah, it's right only. 
Okay. Then as we will see in Lagom specifically, there's something called the read side handler, which is going to read all the persisted events and then you can do anything with them. In our case, it will be updating the read side, right? And then after that, you have your read side data. You can now query on the read side, say, give me customer details. You can now do reports and all that on the data, right? So this is just an image I got from the Microsoft site. You can follow this link if you want to see more. So we are having our commands coming in. We validate the commands, we have domain logic here, and then at the data persistence layer, we're going to have the right side here and the read side store. This is where we would generate queries to get data about uh, about our application. So you have the right side, this is the command and event side. Then you have the read side, this is where we are going to write and generate queries. Okay. So what are the benefits of uh, CQRS? Independent scaling. Uh, so CQRS allows the read and write workloads to scale independently and may result in fewer log contingents. The fact that you have separated your reads from your writes. If your application is write intensive, you can scale that up. If it's read intensive, you can scale that up or down depending on the requirements and it won't affect the performance of the application to actually uh, give better performance since you can scale where there is need, right? Uh, now, another benefit, optimized data schemas. The read side can use a schema that is optimized for queries, while the right side uses a schema that is optimized for updates. That separation will give you these advantages as well. Security, it is, in, it is easy to ensure that only the, the domain entities are performing writes on the data, right? So now you, you know which entity and the only entity that is going to perform a write on a certain piece of data that you have. Okay, so the separation of concerns, segregating the read and write sites can result in models that are more maintainable and flexible. Most of the complex business logic goes into the write model. The read model can be relatively simple. Again, it's because of the separation. And you're going to have simple, simpler queries. You have separated your writes from your reads, right? So your tables on the read side are generally going to be normalized. They're going to be more suitable for reading. You don't have to do a lot of joins, right, when you're querying with that. Of course, they, they can be uh, disadvantages as well. Uh, these are the disadvantages, like module consistency. You have to keep the two models in sync. Now you have the write and the read model, right? CQRS is complex in general and may mean extra work. Now, instead of having a CRUD, a simple CRUD application, you're going to have uh, commands, you're going to have a state uh, and it, uh, object, you're going to have events, you're going to have read side endless. The whole thing can be complex and uh, normally results in more work, right? It might be difficult sometimes to get the aggregate root right. Okay, so on this disadvantage, there is an advantage actually that CQRS is going to force you to know your domain really well. Because if you don't, determining what the aggregate routes are is going to be a bit uh, challenging. Okay, so that's it. If you guys uh, want to know more about this, you can follow these links, these references. I will put them in the description below so that you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So anyway, uh, that's it, an overview on CQRS and uh, event sourcing in Lagoon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's all I have for you today, and uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please like the video. If you need clarity or have any comments, drop them in the comments section below. Uh, subscribe for more videos. Uh, in the next video, we are going to do this thing to do a practical. Now we're going to write code that actually does ES and CQRS. So I hope to see you guys there. Please like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.